three forces act on an object given by these three vectors in component form. We want to find the net force on the object. Well, to find the net force, we need to find the sum of these three forces. And since each vector is written in component form, we need to find the sum of the horizontal components and the sum of the vertical components to determine our net force. So let's go ahead and do that. So the horizontal component will be negative three plus seven plus negative six. And the vertical component will be five plus negative two plus eight. Well, negative three plus seven is four, four plus negative six is negative two. And then for the vertical component, we have five plus negative two, that's three, plus eight, which is 11. This would be the net force from these three forces. Now we're asked what fourth force would need to be added to the object so the net force would be zero. So they're asking us if we start with our net force of negative two, 11, what vector would we have to add to this? So the new net result would be the zero vector. So written in this form, we can easily see the horizontal component, or x, must be the opposite of negative two or positive two, and the vertical component, or y, must be the opposite of positive 11 or negative 11. So the fourth force would be positive two, negative 11. Now that we've answered these two questions, let's interpret what we have found geometrically. We first found the net force by finding the sum of the three force vectors. Here's vector f sub one, here's vector f sub two, and here's vector f sub three. So the net force that we found is this force here from the sum of the three vectors. And then the fourth force, which if we added to the net force resulted in the zero vector, is this green vector here. Notice it's the opposite of the net force vector. So I hope the graph of these vectors helps reinforce what we just found.